What is going on, alpha males? The podcast where we talk about being a man. A real man. Made in the image of God. The right way with God at the center. Today's episode, I'm going to try and walk that line of speaking the truth in love. As the Bible says. That's going to be tricky in today's episode. It's going to be like trying to walk, walking the fence if that fence were a high wire made of barbed wire and I was barefoot. But for what is impossible with men is possible with God. For with God all things are possible. Now let me be clear. I'm not prophesying here. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know. And I'm not pretending to know or predict the future here. What I am saying is if we look at the past, science, history, times change, civilizations collapse. I just recently listened to something again on the Bronze Age collapse. If you picture in your head civilization is going from like a guy with a rock to, you know, stealth fighter jets in a linear progression... That's not really historically accurate. It goes up and goes down. Civilizations rise and they fall. The Bronze Age collapsed. The Dark Ages. You know, in Rome, they had hot running water. Soldiers carried in their kit things to fight infection and wounds. We wouldn't see that again until the 1900s. We wouldn't see common hot running water. Or things like that for well over a thousand years that were common after the collapse of the Roman Empire that I'm aware of. So I'd submit it's not a linear progression and I'd submit many empires come and go. The Samaritans, the ancient Egyptians, the Greeks, the Persians, the Babylonians, the Hittites, the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, the Mamelukes, the Ptolemaic dynasty, the Khans, the Mongols. And those are just a few. Civilizations come and go. Now often, when we think of this, we think of it in Hollywood terms. We think of it as some sudden destruction, World War Three, or, or some zombie apocalypse, whether it's The Walking Dead or World War Z. Why? Because they're blockbusters, because they sell, because they're riveting, not because they're realistic. What about a slow burn? What about a slow decay of civilization we think of Rome as this great great republic that all these public works and hot running water and then it just collapsed but it didn't just collapse it was a series of political problems and greed the decline of their morals it took a long time for the Roman Empire to collapse and I'll point out that Rome is still there. People still live in Rome. I've been there. I've seen the Colosseum. But there were people alive in the Dark Ages, living in shacks and huts. Likely many died of dirty water, looking up and seeing the beautiful aqueducts and perhaps not even knowing what they were for. Not unlikely that many people carried away stones from the Colosseum, a great place of bread and circuses, the social welfare of the time. People who couldn't read or write or had no grasp of what that even was. Carrying in some of its wood away to make chicken coops to make it through the winter. Rome was sacked by what they called barbarians. Now I won't get into what Rome did to those people as being barbaric in and of itself. Which led to what happened. But Rome was sacked by what they called barbarians. But that didn't just happen in a day. Rome had been declining for a long, long time. 
it was a slow burn. People don't generally make Hollywood blockbusters out of slow decay. But that doesn't make it not real. Now here's where it might get hard to listen to. I do a whole nother flagship podcast called Simple Man Sermons, and they are that. They are sermons. And I'll sometimes give the precursor, the preamble, or the postscript that this is a hard teaching. But Jesus' disciples said that about his teaching. They said, it is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? But it didn't stop Jesus from saying it. This is not a sermon. This is not a prediction of the future. This is, let us consider, are we perhaps in that slow decline? Are we perhaps in a decline so slow it's hard to recognize? Have we perhaps been in it since World War II? I'm talking America, the American superpower. Have we been in decline And just like the Roman collapse, year to year it may have been hard to recognize. But looking back on it, will we see now that we are in the midst of a slow burn of America? And I take no pleasure in that. If you've heard the bio, you'll know that I'm a veteran of both the United States Marine Corps, a combat veteran, a veteran of the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. I'm also a law enforcement veteran. I have spent what many would consider more than my fair share defending this country from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I have put my life on the line. I have gone to war for this country. So before you get mad, realize that. Take no pleasure in this, but that doesn't make it not true. If we are in the midst of a slow burn, will we perhaps one day A day when you could just go to Walmart and buy guns and ammunition. Just at Walmart, you didn't need any kind of special permit or stamp or requirement or whatever might come in the future. May we be telling our kids one day, forget about how we do now, about how we tell our kids how gas used to be a dollar something a gallon. And that's just me and I'm not that old. Or we'd be telling them about a time when you could literally just go get gas could literally just go to any gas station and stop and get gas and go wherever you wanted. We'll be remembering that as the good old days. Could it get even darker, literally? Could we be telling our kids about a time when you could just hit a switch and a light would come on? Could there be another dark age? Again, history tells us that civilizations come and go. Civilizations, whole ways of life collapse. Again, the Dark Ages. Again, the Bronze Age collapse. It wouldn't be the first time large chunks of the population were literate and that was flipped on its head. And literacy was a small remnant, perhaps preserved in a monastery or something like it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds and I don't know the rate of decay. But ask yourself, honestly... Has America been in decline since World War II? By God's grace, I hope to read the Bible more than anything else. I do read other things, but I only trust them as much as they align with the teachings of the Bible, the truth, the Word of God. The Bible tells us the end is coming, the end of days, judgment day is coming. From the book of Daniel to Jesus' own words to the book of Revelation, there will be trials and tribulations. So I know that's true. It also reminds me of this verse. You'll find this in Second Peter. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Or how about this passage from Second Timothy? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, 
For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. And it goes on. But tell me when I read that if you didn't get a chill thinking about today's times, about people today in our society in America. And I said I read other things. One of those things is the Age of Empires. I'd encourage you to read. I believe it's free and in the public domain, so you're not like stealing anything if you read it. I believe it's free, read audibly on YouTube. The Age of Empires it talks about, this was written a while ago. This is not like written yesterday. And if I were going to give a brief synopsis of this, Age of Empires, it is a study of the life cycles of empires. And it talks about how they come to power and how they come to be great. And then it talks about the fall of empires. I encourage you to read it for yourself. But it talks about right before the collapse, an age of decadence. All the hard work and good morals and good values of our previous generations lead to an age of decadence and overabundance and moral decay. I would submit to you today that we're in that age. He talks about ancient empires, but you see that it's nothing new. He talks about how people in the day in ancient Babylon had what we would call today pop singers and guitars and how they were singing in their lyrics and how they were morally disgusting and how the no kids listen to the show, but how the moral decline in relationships proceeded right before the collapse. Think of that as something new, but it's not. Age of decadence. You'll find that things like celebrity chefs are not new. People stop caring about what's important. They become lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. When young men stop caring about the truth, about the word, about being honorable, brave men, and care more about money and being famous, Today we even kind of have celebrities that are famous for the sake of being famous or celebrity celebrities. Think of like overpaid celebrities and overpaid athletes as something new, but they're not new. They had them in ancient Rome before the collapse. I haven't studied this for myself and by the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter shall be established. But Sir John Glubb in the Age of Empires is about social welfare programs. We think of those as something new. And again, he didn't write this yesterday. He was around in the 1800s. He writes about how there were social programs we'd call today, I believe, social justice in ancient Babylon. He talks about a common threat as being moral decay. I would submit to you today, when I talk about this, your mind may jump to inflation or scarcity in certain things, but I would submit to you that is just a symptom. That is just the fever. The sickness is turning away from God. The sickness is that moral, ethical decay turning away instead of loving God, being lovers of pleasure moral decline. Now this is the Alpha Male Podcast, but look at young women today. What do they idolize? How many of them today would be able to tell you the lyrics are a song of somebody like Lady Gaga or Katy Perry? And how many of those same girls be able to tell you about the story of the book of Ruth, the story of Ruth, the story of Esther, the prayer of the Virgin Mary? And then fast forward, how many of those young girls, what morals do you think they're going to exude? The morals of those women of the Bible? The morals of the female pop singers they want to be like today? Likewise today, what do young men idolize? Now I'm not saying there's no time for leisure, enjoyment, or things like that. I'm just saying to be circumspect and consider for yourself. So, I just want you to consider these things. I know if you listen to Simple Man Sermons, one of the last ones we did, it was also a hard teaching. It said, do all things without complaining. I want you to realize, be circumspect and consider the things around you, but don't complain about them. If you do think that this is true, if you do think that we're in a slow burn, a slow decline, if morals are eroding here in America, don't complain about it. This is the Alpha Male Podcast. What can you do about it? Repent. Now when you hear the word repent, you may think of it as only a religious term or maybe in a false religious term. It doesn't mean go around wailing and blowing giant snot balls in your pillow and 
crying yourself to sleep. Repent. In the Greek, I do believe metanoia. I'm not super fluent in ancient Greek. I may be mispronouncing it, but metanoia, change of mind. Change your mind. Don't be like that just because. Just because America might be in a slow decline doesn't mean that you have to be. Just because American men may be becoming a feminine doesn't mean that you have to be. Just because your generation is throwing away its morals for money doesn't mean that you have to. That's a beta male move. That's what beta males do. Go along with the crowd. If being an alpha male was easy, everybody would be an alpha male. Just because everybody else cares more about things that don't matter doesn't mean that you have to. You don't have to give away your morals. You don't have to throw away your manhood, your true manhood for culture or for society. You might not fit in. Who cares? Alpha males by definition don't fit in. Beta males fit in. They're the crowd. Alpha males are the leader and by definition do not fit in. That's what the word holy means. It means set apart. So be set apart. Be a man. How much lying and cheating, lying and cheating of your neighbor would you do for money, for fame, for recognition? If you're an alpha male, the answer should be none, no amount, as it is written in God's word. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. No amount, none amount. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Who cares if the world around you is in moral decline? Who cares if the women around you are running around half naked on TikTok? You don't have to look at it. Who cares if those women are a dime a dozen? You're an alpha male. Don't settle for a beta female. It might take longer. It might be harder. But find a woman with good morals. Be careful here because I'm not the parent of a daughter. What can you do if you're the father of a daughter? You don't have to let them be influenced by that garbage. You can teach them and show them and lead and be the example of good morals of what a good man is you can show them that so that when they look for a man you know what they're looking for you can tell them about the ultimate man the greatest man Jesus Christ they don't have to wonder what is right and what is wrong what is true and what is not because you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free it's not a mystery God tells you what is true and what is a lie he tells you what is right and what is wrong it is written You've been blessed. You can read. You are an illiterate society. You have been blessed. You have the instruction manual for life. You have the Bible. Read it. Study it. Teach it. You can be aware of the world. You are called to be in the world, but not of the world. You can rise above it. You're not called to wallow in pity because America might be in decline. What is that to you? You follow Christ. That's what Jesus tells his disciples when they're worried about other things. He says, what is that to you? You follow me. You spend a life following God, growing closer to God, and being an alpha male. It doesn't matter if you're listening here in America or in India or in China. Follow God. There's only one true God. There's only one God. That's what you can do about it. Instead of complaining that you know young men can't do anything for themselves, You get out there and do stuff for yourself. And not only that, you teach the men around you that are willing to hear and learn. You teach them how to get their own food, provide for themselves and their family. You. Not everybody is going to listen. Plenty of scoffers. Even be men in today's society that want to act like they're women or act like they can be women. That's garbage. It's a lie. It's not true. Teach whom you can teach. To who will listen. Be a man. Be an example. Be an alpha male. Don't trade your morals for stuff. Don't trade your salvation for money. Don't trade your God for the shiny things of Babylon. If America has turned its back and denied being a Christian nation, you, you can be a Christian man. If America has lost its morals, you can retain yours. If many other men have become weak, you can become strong. You can be stronger. Who cares what everybody else is doing? You be an alpha male. You do the right thing. You follow God. With that, men, I want to say thanks for listening. I'm going to plug in the bio since I didn't plug it in in the beginning. I really want to mess up the flow of the episode and go plug it in. Put it in this episode. You can not listen to it if you want. You always have that option, but I'll leave it in so you know the background that I have and sacrifices that I've done in life for this country. 
hopefully you'll appreciate that it was hard to talk about this episode, but that doesn't make it not true. You know, I liken it to perhaps picture an old man sitting on his front porch on his homestead in his rocking chair. He's been there for generations. He got married there. He raised his kids there. He worked on that house with his own hands. And now that house is on fire. And he really, really likes that house. He really, really loves that house. But that house is on fire. And he just sits there rocking on the front porch. Just thinking about how much he loves that house and how much he wishes it wasn't on fire. But you know, really, really loving something. Really, really wishing something wasn't true. Doesn't make it not true. How about this? A man worked hard his whole life. Right before retirement, he went and found his dream car. A 19... 57 Chevy blue and white and chrome and beautiful piece of Americana one day he's out riding and it starts to rain heavy really heavy he goes around a corner a little bit too fast car goes through a guardrail and flips over and ends up in a stream he's upside down in the vehicle and the vehicle is slowly flooding with water Should this man sit there and pontificate on how much he loves that car and how long he wanted that car and how hard he worked to restore it and get it running right? How much sacrifice he put into that car? Should he flee for his life and get out of that car, get out of that wreckage? 2 Corinthians Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And Revelation 18. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. It's your tactical verse of the day and the tactical tip of the day. Search your heart and see if God is not calling you to come out. Now, I'm not primarily talking about geography. That would likely be easier to just pick up and move somewhere geographically. I'm talking about leaving a system, a corrupt, morally decayed, decadent and hollow Babylon. Withdraw from that. Watch and be ready. In spirit and soul. In the way you think. And what you let your mind feed upon and what you speak out in your system. Be set apart. Maybe bug out early and be separate. With that, the bio and have a blessed day. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God made in his very own image, a follower of Jesus Christ. A simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States. Hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. So a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran. Infantry assaultman. After the combat tours... I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement, I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments 
and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery. Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector, pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting. Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had one more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting. I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion, West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table starting when I was a child. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't want to apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gunfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that.